Tatum. I hit on this a couple weeks ago when he did this interview with Jeff Goodman of CLNS here and now The Messenger. Uh, he talked about Smart leaving. He talked about his dynamic with Brown. I guess he's still out there working with uh, Brown and Pierce in L.A., Josue, as we kicked around a couple weeks ago. So love to see wow. that. But the big one here, I think the biggest, most overarching quote going into this season, especially after they traded uh, Smart, is his perspective on the leadership. He said, Sharon, I'm never going to be Kevin Garnett. As much as people True. want me to be, that's not who I am. The way I lead, the public may not ever see what I do. When I need to, I make sure my voice is heard, and I do it in my own way. I'm not going to be out there jumping up and down screaming. That's not my personality. As much as people want to talk about it and want me to be that, I'm not changing who I am. I lead in my own way. When I talk, everyone in the organization is going to listen. Whatever I say is always for the betterment of the team. My teammates know that. What do you think of that, Sherrod? You know I'm that dude, right, says Jason Tatum. Y'all <laughs> all know I'm that dude, right? Uh, don't get into it. Let the record state, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and, yeah and here's the thing about Tatum. I, I, I'm, um, I think right now what's happening with him is that he's finally having a little bit better alignment between his – confidence and his leadership i think his confidence has always been relatively high and his leadership is starting to creep up very close to where his level of confidence is and what you're starting to see him basically saying look i'm going to speak when i feel good and ready to speak organization gonna to listen to what the hell i gotta say the players all 15 right. 17 you see around me guess who they listen to right. me and if i don't speak they're cool with that when i do speak they're gonna rise up and pay attention because i'm that dude and it's good, to, it's good to hear him articulate that because I think he's felt that way for a while, but wasn't, I think, the greatest messenger for delivering the message to the masses about how he goes about leadership. And part of that, I think, has to do with the fact that he understood that his leadership was this thing that was consistently evolving, and he really didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. Because I think there was a time where he was feeling a little bit of outside pressure to be more vocal. And then I think he just got to the point where he just said, F that, I'm just going to be Jason Tatum. That dude that's going to get you 25 points at least half sleep. I can literally walk onto the floor and drop 25 and not even crack a sweat. Uh, and he's that damn good. And now I think he understands the importance of picking his spots better than he has in the past of when to speak up and speak out and when to just simply let his game do the talking. Uh, I love the fact that he's spending so much time with Paul Pierce because there's no one in the NBA or within the Celtics franchise that understands what Jason Tatum is going through right now better than Paul Pierce. Paul knows to put up big numbers oh. and be that guy that's on the Hall of Fame track and not have a championship. He knows what that feels like. And Tatum, I think, has finally figured out, I need to basically tap into some of that wisdom because – I'm in the same boat right now. I have done everything you could possibly do up to this point in a positive way as a player, except one thing, win a chip. Yep. And that's why, that's, that's why it's, just, it's just so important to really understand the magnitude of what these little videos that people may not put a whole lot of stock into, but understand the value that they're going to play in Tatum's understanding and embracing the fact that it's title or bust. Yep. There's no in between. There's yep. no, Good try, good effort. No, 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 no. The the, the run up to winning a championship is over. Yep. It's it's win it or it's, it's win it now. You have to. Yeah, he has to feel that pressure and respond to that pressure. So if I'm Paul Pierce, I'm like, hey, it, it's hot out here, ain't it, Jason? It ain't it hot out here when everyone is now? Now everything's turned up a notch. You know, everyone's expecting to win that championship, and now the pressure's really on on to year seven. I mean, that's why I love seeing those two. You know, not only working out, but laughing together, all the pictures being posted, you know, shout out to Brett Hampton, you know, out there. And, and it wasn't just a one-time thing, right, Bobby? We talked about They've been there for weeks, weeks, yeah. There's more pictures just, just came out this week. And I, I love that because you, you wonder what those conversations are like, but you know that Paul Pierce is also being like, man, I know what that's like. I know what it's like to have that pressure in that entire city expecting you to do it or people doubting you because that's essentially what happened, right? At least the last couple of years, even even the season that they did make it to the finals, people sort of doubted, oh, can Tatum be that guy? And look, he, he showed you this past season. Sure, the Celtics didn't get back to the finals, but man, 
does he have the clutch gene? Absolutely. You know, it saved the Celtics this season against the, the the Philadelphia 76ers. Was a huge contributor, you know, throughout that third round against the Miami Heat. You know, obviously they didn't come up. You know, they came up short. He, he got hurt in game seven. And, and now he, everyone's going to be wondering, can he come back? Can he, can he bring this team all the way back? And, and win a championship. So seeing these guys work out, I, I love that. And I love the fact that he's talking about uh, being one of uh, the members of Celtics Mount Rushmore. I mean, that's another quote that came from this article. I mean, that's the type of language that you want to hear from Tatum because it's not about winning a championship for his own legacy. You know, he's talking about winning a championship, uh, you know, for the Celtics legacy and being one of those guys, being a, a all-time Celtic great. I mean, that's what the city – obviously loves they adore that type of talk and that's exactly what you want to hear from someone like tatum who's been here long enough and has been so close right two wins away from winning a championship and not being able to get back to the nba finals last season you know so how do you respond from that is he going to have that chip on his shoulder that we're all expecting him to have but not only just say that in interviews but show it in his performances you know is he going to be a top five or is he going to be an mvp candidate you know this could be the year i mean i don't know i don't maybe i'm looking too deep into this whole no. you know, him working out with Paul Pierce, but this could – am I wrong? Am I am I looking too deep into this, Sherrod? Like, could this be that year? Taylor is already a top five player in this league. I mean, so. but will he be in that – There's MVP? a big gap between him and one, though. There is. Will he be, like, will he be in that MVP conversation? Could this if be the that Celtics, year? The way that – the, the to me, the clear pathway to him being league MVP is for the Celtics to be a dominant squad all season long, him giving you 30 and some change every night. What they did early last yeah. year. And he and he was in that conversation early last year. Right. He has to be able to ex- continue along that path for not the first 20, 25, 30 games. We got to be talking about him being that guy after game 60, 65, 70. Right. Consistency at the highest level is the only thing that's going to keep him from being MVP because it's not about talent. It is not about ability to, to take over games. It's about being able to do those things over the course of a season and not just for 40 or 50 games. That's what's going to get him the league MVP. And I do believe he will be – he's going to finish in the top three this year, an MVP. He will be a top three finisher in league MVP. I think, I think this is that year. I think this is that year where he'll be He'll be one of those guys. And that's obviously going to be a, a huge, you know, milestone for him. But, you know, again, to, to, to get back to what you guys are talking you know, talking about him being a leader, I think it's always been by example. He's not going to be, like he said, he's not going to be Kevin Garnett. He's not going to get in people's faces, but he leads by example. And I think that's how he's got he, – he can, you know, get everyone focused and get everyone on the same page, but now do it on another level. And doing it with Jalen Brown. I mean, seeing those pictures of these guys in the gym together, you know, in the summertime, I love that. You know, I want to see more of that, and, and I want to see how these two can lead together. But obviously, you know, how, how Tatum's going to be able to, to take things to another level as a, as a player. Yeah, and he talked a little bit about that dynamic with Brown. He said, I'm 25, he'll be 27 in two months. We're far from perfect. We won't ever get the credit we deserve until we win a championship. As Facts, you know, right. That's the ultimate goal, and you can't bypass all the things we've accomplished in the six years we've been teammates at a very young age. We've been to the playoffs every year. We've gotten better. It took time to figure out how we can be special as we can be and how we can coexist and do it together. Everybody says they take turns. I feel like we got to a place where we were feeding off each other, playing really well, he said. Uh, so they're trying to get over the hump. Like you said, Joe Sway, ton of the leadership comes on the court. I think we all see him capable of doing that. 